Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny, and welcome back to yet another reaction video, this time to a brand new Game Theory episode. The other day, MadPat released a brand new Game Theory on FNAF titled Three New FNAF Timeline Theories. So I'm very interested, and if I'm being honest, quite nervous about what this video has in store, because I'll keep it a stack with you guys right now, I'm not the biggest fan of the whole FNAF lore anymore. I feel like it's gone completely off the rails. I've completely lost hope in trying to stay on top of it, trying to figure out every single little detail and understanding the timeline. So if I seem like a complete idiot and have no clue what I'm talking about, it's probably because I'm an idiot and have no clue what I'm talking about. So prepare for about 18 minutes of me going, uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> but I still wanted to watch it because I know a lot of you guys really enjoy the reactions to game theory. And I don't know, maybe this can spark some discussions in the comments, but please be nice. So as I just brought up, this is Game Theory 3 New FNAF Timeline Theories. And currently it's number 4 on trending, which is just insane. So if you guys enjoy the reaction videos and you want to see more of them, maybe hit the like button, consider subscribing. Yesterday was insane, we got a whole bunch of FNAF news and I still need to talk about the new update that happened on securitybreachtv.com. So videos and all that coming soon, but anyways, let's hop into the reaction. Let's go. All right. New Five Nights at Freddy's book drop. Map hat on the Let's couch. What's new to talk about in the world of FNAF? Oh, it's friendly Readers face. Beware, you can't see it, but I have scare. it. When Fazbear Entertainment unveils their most the twisted bonnies. creation yet, sea bonnies, small blue fish with rabbit ears. When Mott drinks a tainted glass of water, trembles yeah. and multiply inside his stomach and steal his identity. One cloned human made up of thousands of little blue bunny fish. Fazbear Frights is weird. That's probably for the best. I don't really want to see a game theory on sea bonnies. Oh shoot! Hello, internet. Welcome to Game Theory, the show that asks, "Have you signed my petition to make me the host of Jeopardy yet?" I just need about eighty thousand. <laughs> I have actually. To get to our goal. And I think he's past you know, uh, three hundred k or whatever is, know his goal was. Just on that petition is a way to help support me getting. Ken Jennings is the the host for the rest of the year. Also, just a huge cool. vote of support to all of your favorite digital creators who often get overlooked and tossed aside by mainstream media. As a great example of that, our suck. petition when it crossed two hundred thousand signatures in a week got covered by one blog huge only shout out to one Newsweek. thank you for recognizing a digital creator's value in the world Newsweek. meanwhile an older school celebrity whose petition took nearly a year to get to the same place got tons of articles all over the place just God saying damn news people a real thing anyway it's not like i'm gonna be leaving the channels or anything like that if anything were to come of this so if you have any questions those are all answered i think it would be dope for him to host jeopardy even for like one episode the goal i just love to show the world yet again and why this community and why digital creators as a whole are worthy of attention and respect. I know you guys are. I'm fighting on all of our behalves and I'm going to I know some people are annoyed about this, but I think it's cool. Anyway, thank you so much for your support. You know, now, it's a good idea. Now, Wish him luck. Phrase, jumping the shark. It dates mm -hmm. back to an episode of the classic series Happy Days, which aired in the mid 70s and early 80s. This show crushed, running for 11 seasons and staying as Sheesh. a top 5 most watched show for 3 straight years. God damn. People loved this thing. Anyway, Season 5, Episode 3. At the peak of the show's fame, they do a special really know series of episodes. Going with, with FNAF, but... To Hollywood. And the cool guy in the show, the Fonz... Hey! Hey, big man! ...to test his bravery by jumping over a shark on water skis. And, uh, as you probably guessed, he does it. Complete with swim trunks and trademark leather jacket. Well, it was shoot! A moment that was so ridiculous, so over-the-top, and so dumb that it single-handedly <laughs> created the phrase that would forever... That's not dumb, that's cool! ...when a series loses all of its sense. At this point, FNAF, it's jumped all the sharks just a big oh, yeah. old shark sandwich giant tower of sharks yep. right there the only thing that would make this more sharky would be if it suddenly introduced a shark animatronic they haven't they haven't done that yet right right <sighs> oh, okay well there's still time so well who's gonna, gonna tell him about felix <laughs> wait does he actually not know released its penultimate installment Shoot. and uh it's weird tiny rabbit guppies that steal your identity a pink substance called fazgoo yeah i still gotta talk about friendly face your identity animatronics that more reason you for you to subscribe to the channel. Your identity. Huh. There's a definite pattern in these stories, isn't there? Could animatronics stealing identities and humans not actually being themselves be somehow important to the lore of the series? Certainly seems Probably. like the books are beating that point over our heads. <laughs> and honestly, this points to a larger trend here. For as 
crazy as these stories have gotten. And believe me, they've really gone off the rails at mm -hmm. this point. There's definitely still merit in them from a lore-solving perspective. Because, as yeah. I'm about to show you, for every story about underwater rabbit guppies swimming around in your insides, I can't there's this another is FNAF one nowadays. or two that get you asking brand new questions about both the past and future of Hello, the franchise. Hello, little Joe. So, go ahead. Take a break from eating your best friend that happened to fall into a vat of pizza sauce. Something that, yes, also kind of happened in one of these stories. And consider the following these books. three theories ripped straight from the pages of the book. Let's go! Theory number one, Chica started as a mediocre melody. In Fazbear Friends, number nine, the puppet carver, we're told the story of Jack, manager of a failing pizzeria named the Pizza Playground. Yeah, it's not actually a Freddy Fazbear <laughs> establishment. And not said, Fazbear's. That's Fazbear's. an important okay. detail since every other pizza place in the Fazbear Frights book series has tied back to Freddy's in some way. Every but single for some one, reason, huh? this one is deliberately different. What's also noteworthy about the Pizza Playground is the restaurant's animatronic band. Which yeah, I heard about Pig Patch. I didn't know about the These other ones. These things are straight up busted. The roster includes a banjo strumming. <laughs> Spoilers, I guess. Pig, a bear, creatively named Baron Von Bear. Two Good other name. unnamed creatures that have already broken down and a, quote, weird bird thing. Now, if the words banjo pig mm. don't jump out to you, well, congratulations, you have a richer and more fulfilling life than <laughs> I do, because when I hear that phrase, Damn. my mind immediately jumps to one thing, the mediocre melodies. The cool, hey, Mr. Hippo, that we my man. FNAF 6 Pizzeria Simulator. A crew of animatronics consisting of a oh. banjo playing pig, an off-brand Freddy Fazbear ripoff with a southern accent named Ned Bear, a talkative hippo, <laughs> yeah! a frog, and an overdramatic elephant. They're characters that we all brushed off at the time because they just seemed unaffiliated with anything Fazbear related. And Not then wrong. they came back, returning an ultimate custom night where they collectively gave voice to and Cassidy. The fun one time Freddy didn't, we did Foxy didn't. Lines like this. Everyone Priority, Scott. And they turn their back and I'm like, boo, and they're like, uh, sorry, queued up the wrong clip. <laughs> this, one. this is how it feels, and you get to experience it over and over. It was weird that it was dumb. You know, it suddenly occurs to me that maybe they were the ones that had to be Cassidy's voice in this game because he's a spirit who's trapped inside Golden Freddy, a Springlock who was spirit. never actually given a true voice Unless I'm wrong. Whereas everyone else in the series I believe was Cassie's given a voice a she. at least at some point. Just a thought that I had randomly in the recording booth as I was rereading these lines. Also, hmm. Springtrap is able to talk because he has a guy inside of him, so interesting. <laughs> anyway, the mediocre melodies, a huh. generic Freddy alternative, a country pig that plays the banjo, unnamed other characters that break down frequently. It seems like Pizza Playground's animatronics are indeed the mediocre melodies. I do believe so. Which call out of a weird bird thing being part of the band particularly interesting. Was Chica originally a mediocre melody? Chica hmm. has always been a bit of an oddball in the group. <laughs> Let's go! Instance, she's the only one to go missing for a game. Specifically in Sister Location, she's the only one of the core four to not appear. And if you'll remember all the way back to the teasers for Sister Location, Chica's party world was listed <gasps> Source code as a separate establishment Nostalgia. away from Circus Babies Entertainment and Rental. That's crazy. We also know that Freddie and Bonnie have been together since their literal golden days, which means mm -hmm. that Chica had to have been a later addition to the crew. Mm -hmm. Maybe she was with another band of animatronics the entire time. I mean, even the theming makes more sense with the mediocre melodies. Something about chicken animatronic wearing a bib just fits better alongside a farm themed banjo pig and bear with a southern drawl. Mm -hmm. Kind of makes you wonder where Foxy the pirate comes in now, huh? Anyway, the reason I bring all of it's this not up a is that bad idea. I suspected that Chica is the key to the whole timeline of these games. <laughs> <laughs> joke, I've literally had an email That's awesome. Box for years addressed to myself reminding me to follow the missing Chica since her coming and going from the lineup seems important, but up until now I've never I feel like I've heard him talk about this in the past. We've known for a long time. Which is hilarious that he's still thinking about it. Susie. <laughs> but now this story potentially connecting her to the mediocre melodies is yet another piece of evidence that we can use. So if you ever see a video titled Follow the missing Chica. You'll know that we finally figured it out. Theory awesome. Two, okay, so for these like three theory game theory videos, I'm gonna do something a bit different. Usually with these reactions, I'll watch through the whole episode and then I'll talk about it at the very end. However, and I know a lot of you guys hate pausing and I'm, I'm sorry about that. I think it's better to pause after a theory and then talk about it since I don't think these are all gonna be connected because I think this is gonna talk about Balloon Boy. So, Chica being a mediocre melody character. It's definitely an interesting theory and I can see where he's coming from. I feel like there is, uh, 
notable evidence for the theory, and at the end of the day, these are just, like, mini-theories that MatPat is coming up with. So I don't, or at least I, I hope he doesn't, completely outright believe Chica was a mediocre melody, it's it's simply a theory. I think the call-out of Chica being Wait, specifically a weird bird character is is an on track with chica the animatronic because chica is just kind of a normal chicken so i think the bird being you know specifically weird may not necessarily be chica herself i guess it all just kind of depends on where you fit the mediocre melodies into the timeline and again i don't really know a whole lot about the freaking timeline so all i know is that these guys appeared in fnaf 6 which is pretty far late into the timeline however they do use a endoskeleton that, at the very least, is very similar to the Endo-01 Endo from FNAF 1, which is kind of early on in the timeline, not too early on though. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe FNAF 1's after Sister Location. So I guess if you assume the mediocre melodies were in a restaurant that, you know, much like Chuck E. Cheese and Showbiz Pizza Place in the real world, were separate and then they joined together to form one, where it was Freddy and Bonnie, and then they added on Chica, and then FNAF 2 happened, right? So you could assume, you know, mediocre melodies was somewhere around after Sister Location, after they had already picked up Foxy. I don't know, I'm already confusing myself, but that's my thoughts on it. Anyways, theory number two, let's go. Two balloon boy souls. There is. A lot? Oh boy, it's time I talk about him. I don't know if you've noticed this, but Hello, internet. videos into our FNAF series, and I haven't talked about Balloon Boy once. Not a single theory. You brought him up earlier. Guy. Go back and check me on that, but Grouping him into the fun times, I think. Because he doesn't Because the, the cheats. Anywhere. His design is different. I remember that. His behavior is different. He doesn't seem to be possessed by kids. And honestly, I've just never had a good sense of what to do mm. with Balloon Boy in the lore of this franchise. <laughs> the box. Until today, in that same puppet carver story with the mediocre melodies, we're introduced to Porter, the handyman who's supposed to be in charge of the faulty animatronics of the pizza playground, but Porter dreams of bigger things. You see, he's a bit of an animatronics genius, and his plan is to take wood and transform it into something alive. To quote from the story, I'm almost finished with the prototype of my machine. It will create low-cost but highly functional animatronics made from only Balloon an Boy's expensive slab plastic. of wood. And not only is this guy a genius, he aspires to greater things. Quote again, once I get a patent on my invention and find a buyer, I'm gonna be out of here so fast I'll leave a dust trail. I mean, take Taking wood and imbuing it with the ability to move on its own. Yeah, I'd say that's gonna. It's an interesting concept, cash. but here's the thing. It I don't know if the story we see Porter turn the story is about Balloon Boy moving character. No remnant or Fazgu required. He flips a switch on its back and it just comes to life. They describe it as resembling the drawing models from high school art class, but like the Minarinas. Call out that were you to put the figure in a fuzzy suit, it would resemble a bunny or a fox or a bear, and you'd have a low cost animatronic. In short, it feels like this story gives us a lot. First, By the way, I haven't read reading any of the Fast Red Red books except the first one. An animatronic inventor just so, looking for a buyer to I'm a bit out of touch. To launch his career. A buyer maybe named William Afton? Seems to me that Henry was a college engineer with a great idea, and his earliest experiments were in the form of these living wooden dolls. This, in turn, explains both Balloon Boy and the mini I do like that idea, because it gives Henry a bit of pass. Resembling the drawing models from high school art class, which, if you're not familiar, are these guys. That hmm. is why we have so many living dolls wandering around these pizzerias that don't seem to have... I don't think little Joe's alive. ...only able to say basic words like, Hi. Hi. Hello? In short, Balloon Boy isn't an animatronic. Ooh, I have or a thought. at least not in the way that we all consider animatronics. I'll talk about you it know, later. living robots with dead children's souls trapped in them, infused with remnant, all that good stuff. Taking it <laughs> one step further, this might even have timeline implications. Wooden dolls appear in pretty much all the games currently thought Hey, I got the timeline right. Timeline. Oh, yeah. Too, of course, with Balloon Boy, but also very heavily in sister location. On the main console, there's a marionette named Little Joe, a doll named the Magician. I don't think they're alive. Figurine and a series I think I think they just make Center's noises. Mask, music Man, the Mini Arenas, Baby, Ballora, whoa, 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 even the puppet whoa. face all <laughs> hey. seem to stem from this uh, era of Henry's creation. Chill out there. <laughs> I wouldn't group those guys into the, the wooden dolls. Of the fun time animatronics, leading up to the eventual opening and uh, immediate closure of Circus Baby's whoa. Pizza World. Hold on. As a reminder, Baby's Pause. Pizza World has never actually <laughs> appeared in a game. Rather, we know that it exists based on hidden website text, and that it was closed down due to a quote-unquote gas leak, which is just PR speak for Afton's 
daughter get nabbed by baby, and the characters got retired <laughs> have a lot to the basement to talk about right now. Circus Babies Entertainment and Rentals. The only game that happens earlier than these two is currently FNAF 4, and mm -hmm. did you know it, that's also the only one without a Balloon Boy appearance. Or rather, a questionably canon appearance since Nightmare Balloon Boy was in it briefly yeah. as part of the Halloween update. Long story short, perhaps the appearance of Balloon Boy and the other wooden <laughs> okay. clown faced characters marks the start of William and Henry's partnership. I know a lot of people tend it's to. Not, again, it's not a bad idea. A lot of evidence points to sister location happening. Referring to the creation of sister location. I think all comics. of this is yet more fuel to that fight. Oh, maybe and I didn't get the time the right. William, right? Theory it's... number three William Allen okay. is a Pause. stepfather. We'll get back to that. First up, again, I, I don't think it's a bad idea to say Henry created these wooden dolls in college or whatever. Like, very early on in his animatronic designing career, you could say. Because I do believe... Who did the business at Freddy's? It might have been William, and then Henry made the animatronics. But then in Sister Location, it was a bit different, because uh, it wasn't Henry that made it the fun times, it was Afton. Though, I do believe in, in FNAF 6, Henry did say that he helped create them, so I guess it makes a bit of sense, but I don't know if I would go as far to say Henry was, like, the main guy who made these guys out of wood. Which, moving on to my second <laughs> thing to bring up, a lot of these guys, I don't think they would work well in the machine. I think the Minorinas, absolutely work, right? They're wooden, they're alive. The magician, the gypsy, uh, the heads, and little Joe, I can see them working, but I don't think that they're alive. I think they just make noises. Which, speaking of that, in the books, the original trilogy of books with Charlie and Henry and all those people, Charlie does work on a project that has two heads that talk to each other, so... Uh, that's just a thought. Maybe Henry could have used some similar technology to make these guys make sounds, I don't know. But these guys are all made out of, like, metal or plastic or some other material that I don't think the machine in Puppet Carver could replicate. Same thing with Balloon Boy. Does Sister Location not take place during FNAF 4? I thought... I don't know. Again, guys, I'm out of loop with the goddamn timeline and the lore. I'm sorry. But anyways, I'm interested to see... William as a stepfather. Let's have a look at that. William. Theory number three, William Afton is a stepfather. At the beginning of the series, I very out there, but that a huge number I'll of listen. Fazbear Fright stories have a theme of identities being stolen. At this point, it feels like it appears once in every book. The other massive theme that keeps recurring in these tales are single parent households. Dads abandoning the family and just straight up bad dads. Lots and lots of bad fathers. Up through the eighth book, 12 of 24 stories feature a single parent home. Just That's to half. Go through some quick examples. In the book Step Closer, there are two stories that have a dad up and leave the family. 1.35 a.m. is about a foster child that had an abusive foster dad. The New Kid, another abusive dad who left. The Cliffs is about a single Damn. dad losing a son. Breaking Wheel has the character Reed who has a single dad who's, quote, trying his best. And in the short story What We Found, which is basically just a retelling of FNAF 3, Hudson loses his father when he takes his own life on account of mental illness, only to wind up with Damn. Lewis, yet another abusive stepfather. To me, this is not a coincidence. It's the book. I don't think it is either. To point our attention to a common theme in the game that Afton may not be the father that we've assumed he was this entire time. At this point, we're fairly certain that the orange guy from the FNAF 6 Maybe. minigame Midnight Motorist. I think is it's a pretty guy. late in the franchise to and bring that, that up. And we see he's far from a caring and compassionate father. Banging on doors, yelling at his son, making threats. Shock of all shocks, a guy who moonlights by kidnapping kids and running experiments on their remnant <laughs> soul juices and a father you want to go into the backyard <laughs> yeah, and play yeah, catch no. with. Whoa, who would have saw that one coming? No, nah, I may also that. The books seem to be alluding to another layer in this, that he isn't actually crying child or Elizabeth's biological father. It would explain why Baby in both the Silver Eyes trilogy and Fazbear Frights feels a cold distance from her dad. Not just huh. that he's lost in his work, but that he's not interested in her outside of what she can do for his experiments. That might be why he actually prefers Henry's daughter to his own. It might also explain Afton's relationship with the crying child, how we've suspected for a while that Afton might have been running experiments on him, torturing him with hmm. 
animatronics and supervising him with surveillance cameras from his underground office. Taking it one step further, remember that story of Hudson whose dad took huh. his own life? Well, I mean, I, I can see it, but I don't know if I believe it. Shown to take his own life. And Hudson, which I mean, it is a theory, so. Is a very clear parallel for Michael Afton. So, could Michael Afton have started as Henry's son, only to wind up as William's stepson? Think back to the sister location cartoons. Clara, the baby isn't mine. An undying vampire in purple repeatedly saying, He's not my son, in between every but night of that in game. sister I mean, location, they said that Michael looks like theories, William. But I think there's at least some interesting parallels there to consider. Supporting this, we've also yet to see any adult females in the Afton household. Now, I've speculated that Ballora's song is about a wife leaving her husband when he can't escape his own grief, but who knows? That song could be related to Henry's grief at the loss of his daughter, Charlie. In the original uh, novels, we're shown that Charlie died. Why do they use this? I, they use that so grief, often. It's so fan-made. Right? Take his own life. What if the right? about an empty tomb isn't William's sadness, but rather a song about Henry's? And that in the aftermath of his death, his kids go to William, his partner. Oh yeah, speaking of Charlie, did you know that the puppet's name officially was Coils the Clown for a while? It's true. In the story Jump for Tickets, we're introduced to a character named uh, Coils the Clown, uh, who, quote, has uh, a lanky body with lemon and lime stripes, no. has long arms, three it's fingers, bad. and a face that... Like <laughs> Wait, hold on. ...that turns upside down when it's sad. Wait, no. Like the security puppet in the game, Coils the Clown is canonically responsible for roaming around the restaurant looking for intruders and gets sad when a child dies accidentally on his watch. Again, like every Wait. of all the books, there's definitely some changes that have been no. made, but the thought of the puppet having an actual name and that funny like Coils the Clown made me pretty happy, even though it was a small thing. So there you have it, friends. Three more <laughs> theories to chew on down in the comments below and on the Game Theory sub. Does he not know it's supposed to be like, I think it's supposed to be entered. It's so not the puppet. Oh, God. Okay, so let's talk about William being a stepdad. I don't think it's William. I do find it interesting that it's constantly being beaten over our heads that someone is not you know, the, the father of some son or some kid, I don't know, but I don't think it's William. Especially because Michael in Sister Location is said to look like William Afton, right? Michael says in his speech, they thought I was you. Which, thinking about it now, Baby does say, I don't recognize you, you are new. I remember the scenario, however, and you would think maybe she would remember her own brother and Michael says they look like he looks like William. I don't know. I think it's an interesting theory. I don't think it's meant for William. I do think the Afton family we have pretty nailed down. But again, at the end of the day, these are just mini theories. Again, I don't think MatPat actually thinks any of these are true. It's just interesting to bring up. As for the whole Coils the Clown bit with, um, with the puppet... I don't think Coils the Clown is supposed to be the puppet. I think it's supposed to be, like, pre-sister location Ennard. Because I'm pretty sure it talks about, like, a wonky eye, which Ennard has a missing eye. Oh, no, it, it hangs down, so a wonky eye. And instead of photoshopping the, the stripes on the arms of the puppet to match the colors, the hat, I believe, on Ennard has the same uh, lemon and lime stripes. So I don't know why this was thrown in there, right? He just kind of says, oh, did you know that the puppet is Coils? Did you know that the puppet's name officially was Coils the Clown? All right, it was, I, I don't believe that. Anyways, I'm seeing some uh, security breach. Let's, let's wrap it up. to chew on down in the comments below and on the Game Theory subreddit. You can bet that I will be reading all of your thoughts, so make sure you keep them coming. I don't know if any of these will lead to massive lore revelations, but hey, they were things that I thought were at least worthy of calling See? And thinking about and all of he just says even there's stuff you should think about around security breach I mean he doesn't think they're real the images coming out of their secret websites yep. pretty terrifying stuff still early days to be sure over there which is why I didn't want to comment on any of that yet but you can bet that we're starting to get close to the actual release of a game Ooh! in this game franchise NAF season is upon us yet again <laughs> and finally I'll have a game to talk about rather than more books so stay safe and watch oh, out I'm for so hyped. misfiring animatronics tied to security databases in the meantime, remember, it's all just a theory. A, a game, game theory. theory. Yeah, I think MatPat has some very interesting theories in here. Again, I don't think he thinks any of these are legit theories. I think he just wants to throw them out there. You know, not many people actually read the books, and hopefully these theories, you know, encourage people to, to look for clues. I think it's all very interesting. Again, I don't believe any of them immediately. I can definitely see where Matt is coming from, but... 
I don't think this is it. But, you know, I'm not trying to go on here and be just like, these are not legit. How dare you, you know, spread misinformation. I think, or at least I hope it's pretty obvious that these are just mini theories to get you thinking. And speaking of thinking, you. What do you think? <laughs> See if you guys can start some discussions in the comments down below because these are all very interesting and I'd love to hear what you guys think. So thank you guys so much for watching another reaction video. I believe the next reaction we have is going to be on Saturday for Daco's new Lonely Freddy song. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.